The Dishonored series is perhaps the most visually striking series I have ever played. From the dark streets of Donwell to the vibrant rooftops of Kanaka, Dishonored is one word and one word only. Beautiful. And this doesn't extend solely to the general look of the game, but to the artwork as well. I'm sure we've all stared at the framed paintings across the trilogy and gone, wow, that's really fucking cool looking. And the game's story and themes connect to this art too. The art isn't just there to fill a void, it's there because the story connects to it and helps build the atmosphere of Dishonored. Most of the time in Dishonored, you aren't sneaking around a homeless guy's house. You're sneaking around the houses of the most successful people in Dunmore and Kanaka, and because of that, they have the money to have self-portraits done, or to have these beautiful landscapes painted. And while I've always asked myself, what style are these paintings? What real-life artists do they mimic, if any, and what makes them so visually attractive to me and perhaps to you too? And, well, I did some digging, and I think I have the answers, so, and... It gives me another excuse to fan go over Dishonored again, which I will never say no to. So expect another Dishonored video soon. But yeah, what is Dishonored's art style? Anton Sokolov's self-portrait is perhaps the perfect jumping off point for a fairly in-depth analysis art style across both Dishonored 1 and 2 and Death of the Outsider. Sokolov's self-portrait provides the perfect representation of the style that Dishonored 1 was aiming for, at least across the rest of Sokolov's art, as some of the other art featured in that game is a little bit different. But regardless, Sokolov's art in the game is very much like classical realism paintings in real life. Painting like Daniel Graves' Pygmalion feel very similar to the work that Cedric Prerevene, I am probably butchered that, the real-life artist behind Sokolov's in-game work does, although it's obvious that they don't belong to the same style. They have similar features, sure, but they aren't the same. Cedric's work is far more blotchy, for lack of a better word. The colours aren't blended into each other, which gives it this very distinct look. But using my very limited knowledge of how different schools of art look and function, I would say that Cedric's work is very Barrico-esque. But it seems to fall more in line with the compositional techniques being employed by Scottish-born painter Jack Fratorino. I would argue that Vitrino's The Weight is similar in feel and in style, in addition to that it's a self-portrait as well. Apologies as I could not find a higher resolution version of this painting anywhere. But regardless, Ventrilo himself was part of the contemporary art movement which by definition doesn't really have a style, but I would argue that he sort of has a film noir-esque styling to his work, and of course in typical fashion, Edward Hopper comes to mind as I look at Sokolov's work. This here is Edward Hopper's self-portrait, and I think in terms of visual styling and technique, it's probably the most direct comparison to Sokolov's self-portrait. Sure, Hopper's is not as dark or as moody, but it has the same brushwork. Although Sokolov's work doesn't blend colours and Hopper's does. But as we are talking about the artwork of the Dishonored series, not just Sokolov's, I have to acknowledge the other big artists from the original game's DLC. And while it's very different from Sokolov's work, Veronique Meganoid is the real-life artist behind the Delilah paintings from Dishonored 1's DLCs, and they're just as beautiful as Pei Webinay's work. Delilah's work is much more focused on the use of colour, particularly contrasting colours as can be seen on the outsider's chin. The use of yellows combined with reds and with blues is extremely interesting, it creates this vivid image of what is, within the lore of Dishonored, a very otherworldly being. And I guess this otherworldly property does come across in the swirly and almost geometric shapes around the outsider's face. Almost like everything but him is a blur, or maybe it doesn't matter. And yeah, they're very different from the dark, moody vibe of Sokolov's work, and this makes sense when you consider who these characters are. Delilah is a witch whose power comes from the outsider, from the void, from the place the outsider calls home. So why would Delilah see him as anything other than vibrant and beautiful? And well, if you look at Sokolov's painting of the outside, you can understand this even more. Sokolov is a man who is guided by science, maybe even by the outsider himself, but he doesn't get powers from him, just dreams. And that means that Sokolov's take on what the outsider looks like is going to be very different from Delilah's. Sokolov's painting of the outsider is almost clouded in fog, and these strange markings. Sokolov's view of the outsider is obviously a darker one than what Delilah sees, but they still both view him as unknowable to some degree. And as for Delilah's style, well, it's expressionism. But it changes in Dishonored 2, 
as does Sokolov's style, and so does the general look of the game. In Dishonored 2, the rat plague is over. Dunmore was a far brighter city now. It's still dark, but it's not as overwhelmingly sad as it was in the first game. But for Dishonored 2, we actually only stay in Dunwall for a small fraction of the game. We spend most of the game in the city of Kanaka, which seems to be styled after both the Mediterranean and South American architectural styles. Which means that, yeah, it's sunny and there's far more light now. And that is important when discussing the changes in art style between Dishonored 1 and 2. If we were to take another look at Delilah's and Sokolov's painting from the original game, would you describe them as dark? I think I would, more so for Sokolov's work, however, as they are very depressed in general paintings. Delilah's work is colourful, but it's still dark. And while in Dishonored 2, both Sokolov and Delilah alter their styles somewhat drastically. This is Sokolov's outsider painting from Dishonored 2, and while it's starkly different in nearly every way, gone is the ever-clouding fog and so are the strange symbols. But now we can see his face clearly, and while the painting seems far lighter, doesn't it? We now actually get highlights on his skin and the side of his face as if a light was pointed at him from out of frame. And don't forget that, that now there's no background, just black and maybe some smoke on the upper right hand side. But interestingly, the real life artist behind Sokolov hasn't changed. It's the same guy, it's still Peravne. But his style was shifted and it's not like it's drastically different. But then you have Delilah, whose style is completely different. Delilah's painting of Dr. Hypatia is perhaps the best example of her change in style. It's so far removed from what she painted in the original game's DLC, but much like Sokolov, we can still see the remains of an original style. Colour. Delilah is still using these vivid colours, but that's really it. This newer style is kind of like a surrealist cubism, and I really like it. This change in style is because the actual artist behind these paintings changed. Veronica Meganoid painted the Dishonored 1 paintings, while the Dishonored 2 paintings are done by Sergei Kulshov. Both Delilah's and Sokolov's altered styles do fit in better with Dishonored 2's much brighter colour scheme. Dishonored 1 was a very dark game in both subject and appearance. The large amount of the game was set at night or in very overcast days. Meanwhile, Dishonored 2 is set mostly during the day and the colour scheme is much, much brighter. This is most likely why Sokolov's paintings no longer have the muted colour. And the most probable in-universe reason I could see for this is that Delilah and Sokolov are older now and an artist's style does change with time and with the world. And I do just want to take a moment to highlight some of the other art present in Dishonored, mainly those framed pieces of art that you see hanging around the joint. I'm just going to take a look at two of my personal favourites. Both of these pieces are done by Pieter Javinsky, who to my knowledge did a lot of the artwork present in this game. Most likely a very large sum of it. His work is shown in both Dishonored 2 and in Death of the Outsider. Pieter's Javelinsky's Impression of the Void 2 is a stunning artwork. I personally adore how it feels almost apocalyptic, but also alien. I guess that makes sense as it is the Void, and as far as we know, the Void in Dishonored is shapeless. It kind of just exists, and that's it. But what I think is most interesting to me, however, is the use of colour. It's extremely muted. It's mainly brown tones, which kind of makes you think that the void is a dusty place, if that makes sense. Like, it's the kind of place that you would find remnants of itself embedded in the fibres of your clothes, kind of like sand in a shoe after a day at the beach. And of course, brown makes it feel deserted and alone, and this is further aided by the use of an ever-clouding fog, or maybe that's just more dust. If way, I draw this artwork. I would frame it if I could. My other personal favourite artwork in Dishonored 2 is also a Javlinski work titled Bloodfly Nest Keeper. And oh my god, it looks fucking disgusting. Everything about this artwork looks diseased, and that's what makes it so good. The man who was still alive looks sickly and swollen. I think it's the pale skin and the purple, pink, red highlights across his skin. But what is probably most interesting about this artwork is the use of light. The light's focus isn't on the nest keeper, but actually on the blood fly that he appears to be playing with. This places visual importance on the blood fly, but also on what isn't lit, the dead body in the background being used as the nest, for example. And in a similar vein to Impression of the Void, the use of brown again makes me think it's dirty. The background is also a blur of texture, which again places the focus solely on the foreground. And in conclusion, if this video doesn't show you how much effort went into crafting the atmosphere of Dishonored, then I don't know what will. 
this art is such a background thing in these games. You don't really ever have to look at it. It's never forced on you. So for Arcane to put this much effort into what is, for most players, a background detail is astonishing. And to hire such amazing, talented artists and to basically just let them do their thing, that's amazing to me. Major, major kudos to Arcane for doing this.